afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us on another edition, another segment of Condo Insider. I'm your host today, Raveen Tenno, and I wanted to review and go over um, our last week's seminar that we had um, about benchmarking. It's a city and county ordinance that was signed last year, um, um, and it's part of the Oahu's Res Resiliency um, Program. <laughs> So to start off our um, topic today, it's going to be on benchmarking and um, Hawaii Council of Community Associations. We did a seminar last week, Thursday, and it was our first in-person seminar. So it was really nice to see everybody in person for a change. And um, it was held at the Wahoo Country Club. Our speakers were Ben Sullivan and Marissa Kunch. They are the team members from the Resilient Oahu um, team for um, and helping Oahu become a little bit more energy efficient, carbon neutral, all of those um, that are being um, related to climate change. So the reporting period for benchmarking starts June of this year. And the first segment of buildings are gonna be those condo buildings that are 100,000 square feet and larger. And what you're going to do in June is do the reporting for the calendar year of 2022. You're going to enter all of your data into um, an Energy Star. It's called an Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Um, and it's a, a U.S. Department of Energy website. Um, and on that website, there's also a lot of tutorials on there, a lot of other things that can be done. Um, for example, if you really wanted to achieve um, LED certification, um, or even some other certifications as far as energy efficiency, there, there's um, goals that you can also obtain through that. So one of the first things you're gonna get if you haven't already is for your larger buildings, 100,000 square feet and, and up, you should have received from the city and county a letter. And it says um, city and county of Honolulu official notification, and it's about benchmarking, reminder to start, and you're gonna have a building ID. You have to remember to keep, you guys should digitize that copy, keep a copy in your, um, on your computers, another printed copy in a file because it has a building ID. And you have to remember that building ID is not the same as a property TMK number. So you have to make sure you retain that information for as long as we have to do this benchmarking. Um, so not only property managers, but the site managers should also have this on hand. So you're gonna to go to the energystar.gov website. You're gonna create a, an account um, in Portfolio Manager. It's kind of, it's really easy to open the account, but one, there's a couple of triggers or um, things that the boards have to remember. Um, you're gonna establish a username and a password. You have to be very careful about what you're gonna do and create a policy as, as to who's gonna have access um, because once you establish a username, it cannot be changed. And then it's gonna ask for an email for the correspondence to go through. So that is another one that um, condos have to make sure that they're very careful um, on the email that they're gonna use. Cause for example, say the resident manager puts in their, their email, but then he leaves and the new person comes in and we, you, nobody knows what the password is because they didn't keep a copy of that or there was nothing, no paperwork to identify the user, uh, the password, it's gonna be very difficult to do a password reset. So it should really go to um, an email that's gonna be um, a little bit easier to access, like an info at and your property name or um, something. But you have to kind of think backwards because your password resets are gonna be impacted by your emails. And then also remember, that if you, you have to think this out because if you hire a company to do the reporting for you and say you separate from that company, that, that information doesn't follow with you. So um, if you're gonna hire a company to do that, you gotta make sure that you, you, they set up your own portfolio manager because like a company can report for like a like hundred different um, properties. They can actually report it it's set up where you can um, report for multiple companies. So um, you have to be aware that if you separate from that company, 
you, there's no way that they can extract it and separate that data into your own. So if you separate, maybe like two years later, you're going to have to create a new account and go back and re-input all that information. Okay, so be very careful as you decide how or who is going to um, upload all that data. So if you're going to create your account, you're going to, um, there's three utilities involved. You have um, electric, gas, if you have gas, and water usage. So you're going to report, and the term is the aggregated data. So the aggregated data is, it will include not just your separate bill for all your common elements. The utility companies are supposed to provide the aggregated data for all the individual units, but it will not it shouldn't be divided or um, it shouldn't be reporting per unit. It should be the total usage for all the units on one report. Okay, so you're gonna, you already know what your common area is and then there's gonna be a separate one that will have all the aggregated data. Um, so it should be a one line kind of on a spreadsheet, not a whole list of unit numbers, but it's gonna be on the whole, um, on the whole building. And those of you that have parking structures, there's going to be a separate way um, entry into Portfolio Manager on how you separate out that data as well. And um, part of it is supposed to, there's a little bit of confusion still, that the data is supposed to be for the, in the ordinance, it says the gross floor area. So when I had conversation with the energy um, program manager, Ben Sullivan, we discussed, well, how do we measure our gross floor area? We really know what our lot size is from our TMK, but the gross floor area is kind of a little bit, how do we calculate that? So his thought was we can measure from the exterior of the building. So all four sides of the building times the number of floors. So that's one way of doing it. Um, and then there's other calculations for like parking structures. Um, so um, what the city is gonna do with the data, we're not really quite sure yet. Um, but you on portfolio manager, and I suggest everybody just start it now is to play with it because you can create a dummy account. So just don't use your condo name as a dummy account, just do it something else. Um, and for when I was playing with it, I used for the address, I just put one, two, three, anywhere street. And I, you know, I did it that way. Um, but you can play with it and get comfortable with it on how to report it. Um, it's gonna ask for the number of units. And um, when I said, we have to do this per unit, and um, they said, no, we're gonna input only one because it's only for the building. But what's interesting is we're also gonna put in for the number of bedrooms that's in the building. And the reason for that, when I asked that question is, they wanna kind of get, get an idea um, based upon per bedroom, could also relate to how many people are um, in occupancy. Um, and it's, it's an estimate, it doesn't have to be an exact measurement or an exact um, occupancy level. Um, so the um, both, uh, well, Hawaii Electric is preparing a separate web page just for benchmarking. Um, Hawaii Gas is still trying to get some things because I've, I've been in email contact with them trying to find out how they're going to provide. Florida Water Supply, they do have on their website, it's called um, Water Smart, that you can set up an account and download some of that information already or some of the information you can get off your utility bills. So that's another thing that some of the managing agents are going to have to start getting into practice is to um, send a copy of your energy your utility bills to you directly or to the site manager so that they can. Um, start keeping a file of a copy of all of those energy bills. Because if you can't, um, if some of the utility companies don't provide that aggregated data, like um, Hawaii Electric provides it on a spreadsheet that you can download from. And then from there, you can upload it into the portfolio manager, which makes that a lot more easier. Um, but we're still not sure how the other two, Hawaii Gas and um, Board of Water Supply are gonna provide that data. So if they don't provide it in a spreadsheet, then you're going to have to input that data manually. So you're going to need each of the bills for um, to input that information. But it's going to be for the whole year's reporting period. Okay, so I suggest everybody start now 
and playing with the system. Um, they, um, when I sat on it one night playing with it, it took me like two or three hours. It was a whole evening and I was just doing one utility. And then when I saw on the tab, I had to do water and gas. I was like, okay, I'm quitting for the evening. But it, to just set up one, it was like a couple hours. So plan for it to be a couple hours, just the initial setup. And I think after you play with it and um, start learning how to upload the information, then it'll just get easier. But um, we only have to do this once a year. So, you know, that's the hard part when it's once a year because you only do it once. So learning, remembering how to do it it could be a little bit difficult because um, we only do it once. I know for work, sometimes I only access one thing one, once a year and I'm like, okay, how do we do this again? So you may have to re make sure you keep the file with the tutorials on it. Um, every year you might run a review, review the training materials that they have, the little webinars that you can access to get, get, yourself, get yourself familiarized with it. Um, but we do have the emails um, of contact information. Um, and that's up on the screen. Uh, or you can reach out to Hawaii, um, Hawaii Council and we can help you provide the information as well. Um, it, was, um, it was a pretty productive, very intense um, seminar that we did last week. Um, it was the first time that we actually had to take a break um, in the presentation because it, 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 was, it was pretty intense. So if you missed it, um, reach out to us because we do we can email you the powerpoint so you can get that um also there's another page that we, we specifically put all the links of information um and little tutorials and um you have to remember that if you're uh, um the links are not they're embedded with the actual um web address so if you just manually type it in you might not be able to get it so you're gonna have to have the actual material open and then click the link um to get there so um, the whole point of benchmarking is really to track data and usage and um, what the city is gonna do with that down the road, we're really not sure. Um, but just remember, if you're 100,000 square feet and, and larger, you need to report in June. Next year will be, I believe it's 50,000 and smaller. And then the following year will be, um, I believe it's 10,000. 10, but they're doing it incrementally in um, this reporting period. So it's not everybody all at once. The city and state are already on benchmarking. Same with other commercial buildings. They are already doing the benchmarking. Um, the city has um, done some self-evaluation on their own usage, and they have engaged under contract um, an entity to help them be a little bit more performance better. Um, and it is on their Resilient Oahu website. You can see um, a couple of energy usage um, um, for certain buildings. The one that really um, surprised me the most was for the Kapolei Police Department. And I've been in there once and I'm like, oh, it's really cold in there. Um, but they were rated as one of the highest energy usage. Um, but so it's gonna be interesting to see like maybe a year down the road to compare what they have, what they did in the past and how they've changed over time. Um, but I know for us, all of us in condos, we make every effort um, to save um, and conserve energy. I know some that have way back when, when LEDs became the thing, a lot of people already converted to LEDs. You have um, some condos that even turn off their water fountain at night and they were actually surprised at how much money that saved alone, just doing that. So um, we have to, it's, it's an ordinance. We don't have any choice. We have to report. So it's going to start in June. Um, if you do have any problems or any questions, you can certainly reach out to Hawaii Council and we can, um, and we can um, hopefully get with um, the energy program people to get your answers, um, to get your questions answered. Um, also on the paperwork um, that we can provide us, we can also forward your, your request via email. If you send it to us, we can forward it to the program energy people to get a response, which we've already started to do. Um, so we hope everybody um, takes the time now to start learning the program, learning the, the software, um, 
And the software is kind of one that you can't spend a little bit of time here and then get back to it. To set up the initial profile, you, you really should take the set aside like two hours to get it done um, because it may not automatically save. So that's the one thing. You need to set up the utility at one seeding time. Otherwise, you're going to waste your time and you're going to lose that data. So beware. It, it did take me a whole evening to set up just one utility. So um, what's some of the other things? Um, we always have to remember. So there might be a lot of questions regarding. Uh, oh, one of the other things, too, is um, like one building asks a question because their basement of their of their building or their garage is used by their resident manager and the maintenance people. That's where they have all their stuff of equipment. The resident manager's office is down there. And that's going to be included. That has to be included as gross floor area. Okay, so you're going to have to separate out that portion of the, of the parking garage or the basement to report up as gross floor area. The exterior of the building, like your sidewalks, your walkways, Landscaping areas are not supposed to be included in the reporting. So it's really um, all your um, areas where people normally were walking or, or living. Okay. It's just kind of hard to separate out because we're not individually submitted for um, like walkways are this meter and you know, long way back and things like that. So it's going to be an interesting, um, an interesting shift. Um, and how we even calculate this all out. So it's a, it's, everybody's going to be on a learning call. We all have to be patient with it. Um, um, and it's an ordinance. So we have to comply because there are civil penalties for non-reporting. Um, and they're pretty, I think they're pretty hefty, if I remember right. Um, but um, so I hope if anybody has any questions that they will reach out to Hawaii Council. Um, and we can help them along with any questions or any issues. We'll be more than happy to help. So again, start start opening a, a dummy port, portfolio manager account like soon. Don't wait till the day that you have to report. Okay. So I want to thank you all for joining us for another segment of Condo Insider. And happy benchmarking. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.